Hello my loyal companions, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be another high level tournament breakdown which I know you guys really love on this channel because it goes in depth into some of the best players strategies and the way they play with me breaking it down to explain exactly why it works or doesn't work in the respective game. This gameplay is going to come from the winners of yesterday's CMG qualifier, the last qualifier for the big $8,000 tournament event. There were some pretty big prominent figures within this game in the Rogue Company community such as Elvin Calderon whose perspective we'll be looking at, Gringo Jr who was a former member of SDK and then Geo Royals who's another really good member of the community. If you do go on to enjoy the video I just want to see daily educational Rogue Company content make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel but for now let's get into it. Okay, the guys are loading up on to Icarus on attacking side. They're going for a Dahlia Trench, Scorch and Vi combo for the attack. And the opposite team are going for a Fixer, Dahlia, Scorch and Vi combo. So a lot of incendiary grenades. And in total, if both Dahlias link to the Scorch, there's four people, half the teams being immune to that fire. Which is uh, pretty common here on Icarus because the plant slash the defuse is better when you're invulnerable to that incendiary grenade from either the Vi or the Scorch. So... It's a very common shot that we see on this map, but the most common thing we see on this map is the A push. You do see a few Bs filtered in there, uh, here and there, and they tend to be quite effective. But the B, the A push, sorry, is uh, tends to be a little bit better if you play for picks. Now, this is something I was talking about in the in the chat as this game was going on. But you have to play for picks. They see Fathom over there. They get a good uh, about half health onto him. But there's nothing there. Somebody, the trench says he's dead. So somebody must have uh, gone to flank him down on mid through an incense. They're going for the res. Dali is covering the spawn. And they just try to get their bearings back here. After after getting picked. Uh, which is definitely important. It seems like three people, maybe even four, are pushing down that side on B. And absolutely flooded there onto the onto the Vi. Uh, who is now dead. Can we just go away? Now they're kind of stuck. They know three were down on, on the B side, though, so they could just rotate A, and that is what they're deciding to do. They have bomb. They have three members up. This is still winnable, but they're going for the bomb plant here, and this is where things become tricky. I do not like the strategy of planting the bomb there and holding these angles. I think it's so easy to flood people out, even, even with the trench and the trophies to try and stop some of the util. It's still not enough. Because people are good at wasting trophies. That's one trophy wasted now. They've already pushed up to where the bomb is. At this point, they can just start defusing. There's not much that, that this team are going to be able to do. There's two incendiary grenades. Yes, they are immune. The defuse is coming down. They're going to start moving forwards. They're getting a few picks. But see, it's just this big funnel. They're down to two members each. They've got one on each side. This is actually okay for them. But it just depends on one of them not getting picked. Which he does in this case. Leaving us at a 2v1. He needs to take this one really confidently. Gets down to one shot, gets him down, but 36 health. They've resed another one onside the site. The bomb is about to go off. One is looking to defuse while the Scorch pushes the Dahlia, and then the Scorch will get that kill. So yeah, so talking about what I was, I was saying, I do not like that. I love how she was shooting the body rather than getting the defuse. I think she'll still get the defuse, but that is what it is. I don't like the plant bomb strategy. I think you have to play this map for picks if you're going for the A side, because it's so easy, as I said, to flood you off of the bomb. The other exception is that you plant the bomb and you push forward. So you get great long control on A. And don't allow them to get even near the bomb site. You can't give them the bomb and try and burn them off it like you can on the other maps. The retake is just too easy coming onto the A site. So you either have to look for the picks on B or just look for the picks on A. And then try and do that strategy when you have a good numbers advantage. Or you don't and you just play this map for picks. Which I think is a much better strategy. And that is... And for the defender side, they have to do the opposite. They just are fine letting them plant. If they get a pick on the way, great. But if they just let them plant, then they know they can bully them off the site again as long as they maintain long control themselves. When you lose long control, you lose A side and you probably lose the round. So they got one here on long, three on middle, which I don't think is necessary. Stacking three there isn't going to help. Having two long is a much better strategy. They're going for an instant bomb plant again. And you can see these guys are letting them. Unfortunate shots there. If he had hit the, hit the first three shots, then it would have been a nice down. But the burn will take him down. And it's a full kill. But it's a trade one for one. It's another down. Great grenade there from Elvin. It's a three for two right now. But Elvin does go down from a team shot. Lossy goes down on the trench there. They're both one shot, but it is now 2v1. The incense goes down, but that's not going to affect the, uh, the Scorch right there being immune. That's now a 3v1. This is probably going to be another round loss for 
for the side over here with, with Gringo. Gringo is a great shot, but 3v1 against a team who, who are pretty good and pretty coordinated is always going to be rough for him. He push on both angles, and again, yeah, there's nothing he's really going to be able to do there. I said, it's it's an unfortunate situation when you plant that bomb down, because they just flood you off site. They kill you in long if you don't have solid long control. And unfortunately, the two that were there, the trench and uh, the Dahlia, didn't quite team shot as well as the other team team shot, and that was the difference there. So going for, obviously, tenacity, grenades, smoke grenade, and his main primary weapon. Oh, no, he's stopping for lifeline. Or, no, okay, now he does stick with the tenacity, which I think is a good call here. Um, but I don't know, to be fair, there's only one, one explosive and the C4, so two explosives on the side of, um, of the defenders here. So, tenacity may not be worth it, maybe lifeline's better. He is linking to the Scorch, who is obviously going for that bomb plant, getting her up quicker and starting her health regen is going to be kind of important. Okay, uh -huh. they're going for another A plant. Or at least they push. Again, I don't think it should be a plant. I think it should just be securing long control. He's got a smoke grenade and he's going to say that he's got the smoke so he can plant a bit safer. However, the plant hasn't been the issue. Getting the plant down has not been a problem. As such, it's been allowing them to retake it and win the fight once the bomb is down. And that is what they need to start avoiding. Here's somebody flanking. All the util starts to go down. Nice 96. That's three shots down there. Unfortunately, couldn't finish that kill off. The um, Oh, it's a C4, but Tenacity will keep him alive. He's just got to stay there now while he's getting shot at. Probably will go down. Oh, and unfortunately, the, the link is not quite there. And again, look, this is the, the bomb's down, but they're just going to push him off site. And now they're pushed off site. This is, this is where the defenders have great bomb control. You have somebody watching the flank. Nobody's watching long. Smokes come down. They can't see through that. They've got to listen for the bomb plant. They're looking to take some long, but this isn't great. This this is this is gas grenades. Another incense down there. They're just being utiled off while the defuse is coming down. Dali does move to get the long control. Vi going back onto site because she does have the incendiary to push somebody off. But unfortunately, they do start flooding. Gets one down. Isn't going to get the second down with Geo having that SMG. Now it's a two v one. Again, they're put in this situation where. They're just having a rough time. They, you know, they're, they're, they're not able to hold the site, so they need to stop planting this bomb and start focusing on on the picks, on the numbers, and win that way. Or plant but take the spawn. Don't give them. Don't give them the bomb. They've even just said it there. They've, they've called it right now. They said when you're getting the bomb down, they're just playing the site and you're giving them the site. That's not what you can do. This time. You have to bully them off the site. The moment you give them the site. They pretty much have a lot of the control, unless they didn't have a Scorch and Dahlia combo, and then your incendiary grenade is a lot stronger. You have the Vi to use all her util, you have the two incendiary grenades, you could probably burn them and, and poison them off the site long enough. But when you've got that combo, you need to adapt and adjust your play. Here they're going for B. I wonder what they'll do, maybe they're going to try and push it hard, maybe they're going to look for a pick. Grenade comes down, this is a really nice grenade spot, we'll see if it can get anything. Does not hit, does get a nice little pick there onto Geo, an instant down. And they're calling for an instant back down. They're cool saying they, they got their pick and they want to go A now. And this is actually the better time to do it. Now you can afford that plan. It would be better if you had, if you had um, picked one of the other people. Because the fixer isn't necessarily a massive problem. I mean, he, he's great at holding long control. But he's not necessarily great at helping to retake the site, which is their problem. So now, as long as they send two down onto uh, long, this is a lot better. The smoke's coming down. Vi should be long here, I think. Or Dali should now rotate long because she can still revive the Scorch. The Scorch gets out, which is a big, big, big thing because that hasn't been happening. They're watching the flank because they think some people will be coming down there. They just got to set up. I would recommend, honestly, one short, one watching flank too long because, again, I think long is really important. Now that they see them here, nice little pick there. Almost down, might get the revive off with that Dahlia. Obviously immune to the fire here, so he's going to be sitting in the fire. Uh, and they've just got, they've seen two of them. It might even be three of them. And uh, and they're just watching them. Yeah, there you go. That's all three there. They've just literally got to hold this off. There's no way that a team can breach through here. Um, if they play it right, that's two picks down to only one member on the defending side. Bomb is almost about to detonate. They just they should just push. He says he hears someone down this end. They're going to go support, but it doesn't really matter. Bomb should go down. It'll be smart smart of the scorch here just to save money, um, and just allow the round to be over, not give anyone any money, and just uh, go for that. Oh, nope. But he does, he does uh, challenge and get the pick. Unfortunate because that's an extra 500, or actually an extra 2,000 on the side of the trench for that down and that elimination. Interesting to see what he goes here. He's got the lifeline now. Goes for one grenade upgrade and one weapon upgrade. Uh, personally, I think the double 
grenade, grenade would have been better here because Elvin is pretty good with those grenades. He can get some really good picks off. And there's only... There's only one lack of tenacity on the enemy team with the Fixer, and he's a pretty big pick because he has such great control of long. Although so far the Fixer hasn't been a massive impact yet on this game. And that's because these teams aren't really playing for, for Geo to be able to get those sniper angles. I think a lot of teams now are relying on snipers where maybe they don't necessarily need to in the current meta. Good 75. Good 75, yeah. If that was Fixer, that would have been a, a kill. But Tenacity did save the Vi. They're looking for another pick here again. Now they're playing for picks. You can see they won a round. We'll see what happens as they as they play for more picks here. Just holding angles. They're playing mid to look for this pick. They're calling out the rotates. They see another one there. They see the Scorch. That would be a really good pick. Getting Vi, Scorch, or Dahlia, particularly Scorch or Dahlia, is a much better pick. They're looking to rotate out, but they haven't quite got their pick yet, which means if they try and go for just a straight A plant, is going to be is going to be another one. They hear somebody on the site. They think it's a Scorch based on the position that Elvin saw her in before, and they're just going to flood her, which I think is a fantastic strategy here. Flooding her, get that pick, is going to be massive. Yep, you see it? This is a full send. They just need to full send, get this pick. If they let her get away, it's a massive shame. They're getting the res off. I think Dahlia Q is going to come down onto the Scorch. It does. Fixer Smoke comes out. They're calling to everyone to get away from the site. Now that that smoke is down, now Fixer uses ability. You just play time here. It's a 4v4. No pick has been uh, had. And we'll just see how they decide to play this. They need this pick before they try it. He, he, he wants to go for the box. Okay, they're looking for more pick. They're basically just looking for something here, but they're in the same situation they were in round one through, uh, sorry, zero through three, which is they haven't got a pick. There is somebody on there. They do get a nice little trade there. Dali Q can come down. When Dali Q comes down, it's sugar for the plant because they only have four seconds on the clock. There's two picks because they had long control there and they got the scorch on site. Randomly, uh, the fixer pushes up onto the site and they're able to clean from there. That was a big misplay by the defending team to be so out of position there, um, unfortunately. I do actually think maybe the Scorch could have waited a little bit on the enemy team, on the defending team, to try and pull something off there, but she did what they can. It was unfortunate they got picked on long. Again, long control is massive when you're going for the plant and the hold for the plant uh, as well. Goes for Stalker. I know uh, L does like Stalker. We'll see if he keeps it. Goes for the melee weapon with the first upgrade and the second upgrade, which will obviously help him one-shot somebody with, with uh, armor which is going to be really important because the Vi can get an extra health, the Scorch can buy headstrong, and you want to be able to one-shot them with the melee if it comes down to that situation. Dealing 100 and having them burn you down is never great. But yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about this trench pick and why I don't think it was particularly viable as a grenade comes down here. It's the same spot it always has. Hits one for 75, one for 41. Great damage coming out there. Incense coming down, should burn, and it does get the pick and the full kill there. And again, they're going to do what they did back in round four. They're now going to rotate to A because they've got their pick. Another good pick on Vi, who is one of the people I would say is, is, is a good pick here. Bomb comes down to the Scorch. They hear one. They hear one very, very close. They need to push it. It is the Fixer, I believe. Full saying this Fixer getting this pick is going to be really big, but the Fixer will probably run away. You still see him there on the corner. The Trench barbed wire does come down, but they need to push off. This is a little bit of indecision to not trust that they could kill him. They have the sword now. Scorch with a melee weapon. Strange. <laughs> uh, they're going, cool. They call it together, so they all move together. There's probably still someone behind that box, most likely. They're throwing the EMP. No hit, so they know someone's not there. Smoke coming down, so they can get this plant off. And because they're in this 3v4 advantage, they're okay here. Still stacking three short, which I don't like. I don't think Elvin needs to be here right now, because he can still get his revive off from far away. And they get picked on long. He trades it, and a nice kill out coming down from Geo there. The first sort of big play Geo's been able to make here. Unfortunately, they should have probably res Dahlia first because she has the lifeline. And now they're taking it down to probably going to likely be a 3v3, although they're not going for the revive. They're just going to look for these picks. Scorch does go down. Elvin does go down. It's a 1v3. They're just going to go for the defuse here. The reason that they lost this round purely is because Trent lost uh, long control because they had three or four members shooting at him while three were sat on short. That's a, uh, you know... That's not what they want. They needed to send too long, too short, or even three long, too short. Long control is so much more important, and Elvin can still get his revive off without being in short. He can play long and still get the revive off onto the Scorch if she were to go down, with Vi there to support her as well. I think they're overstacking people in short and not valuing the long as much. And I'll talk a little bit about the trench on the attack. I don't like it. 
I don't like the trophies there. I think they're too easy to waste. And I don't think it offers you as much pick potential as something like a shark would have, or even a glitch, or even like a talon. A lot more information, a lot more breach with the flashbangs, a lot more uh, damage to come out of them with also pretty good weapons themselves and good close range weapons should you need it. I think that would have been a better pick for them rather than rather than the trench who didn't really offer that much besides a few trophies and the barbed wire which is so easily counterable at this level of play with an EMP from Scorch or just wasted util whether it be Vi buying a gas grain throwing it or Scorch buying another EMP and just wasting the trophies. Whatever it is, they're easy to waste and it was a little bit of a bad pick in my opinion for this map currently for the attacking side. However, for defense, I think this is a really good defensive lineup. Both teams gone for the exact same lineup and I think this is much, much more in favor of Elvin's team here on the on the defense. And I do not like the fixer pick. They've stacked 3B, 1A to just play for the retake and they're, they're doing essentially exactly what i said the other defending team should do which is play for retake he's gonna save his grenades he has linked to the trench which i think is actually really good here because he gets the double nades and he's able to get a lot more picks with the double nades and without them having anything to stop a grenade you know which i don't think you necessarily need one grenade's coming down should be able to get a pick fortunately only hits one for 50 they are crossing low and he's gonna get a double nade off here onto Gia and Crump, and this is where they need to push really hard. Ignore the poison, ignore the fire, and just push up. Be able to pick off this guy and the other one to win this round. Just scorched left. Elvin needs to heal. They're going around, all teams shotting together. Really good play there. Really great pick from Elvin to help win that round. And I think that was a really strong, uh, really bad by them to, re to position in a way that meant they could get double naded. You know, the these guys should know a little bit better. I'm imagining he picks up Tenacity here. Yep, cool. Tenacity a much uh, stronger pet than, than Stalker off of round one means that when this Dahlia grenade comes down or when the Fixer C4 comes down, he's not going to be punished for it. But yeah, I do not think the Fixer is going to offer them a lot of benefit here. He's great He's great at having long control-ish, unless he gets grenaded or picked out like that. It's, uh, I just do not think the Fixer is great here. I think they again should have got something from a bit more breachy, a little bit more utility to help actually get some picks, because picks is what you want to play on this map. And this could be the potential for a really good comeback for this team. They were down 4-2 going into the half. Again, splitting 3-1. Elvin just playing for information here. Just needs to figure out where they are so the team knows uh, whether or not they need to rotate. They see two here. They might see three. They're just peeling back off site. Again, just not giving, just allowing them to have the site they want them to plan in because they have a much stronger team, again, to just play the retake. They just bully them off site. What are the attacking team going to do? Similar as we, we saw in rounds one through three. They're not going to do anything to stop them. So that's what they got to play. Unfortunately, the attacking team don't have great pick potential with the exception of maybe Fixer could... But I, I just don't think it's as strong. He's getting shot from sight. It seems it seems that the, the defenders got smoked out and then they just pushed and played for Elvin there. That was unfortunate. Probably more Vayu Util had to go down to stop that to protect Elvin. Or Elvin had to play a little bit further off of yellow there on that wall. So a little bit rough there um, for the side of the attackers. But again... 3v4 going for the retake isn't awful. They have the core members they need, which will be the Scorch and the Vi. Trench there also for a bit of help, putting down the trophies. Again, I think the trophies and Trench are good for the for the defending side because... Ooh, nice bit of damage coming out, but he's going to go burn down. This is a trade, however. Another great play there by the Scorch, getting some really big downs. It's now a 1v2 as he's already cleaned up two of them. Amazing headshot coming down there. Dahlia Res is probably going to come down. Is able to finish him. He's on one HP, capped to 82, and a few seconds left on the bomb. He's going for the bomb, sees him. One, two, three, and he picks him off there on the kill. That was an incredible play there by Crixium. Um, just absolutely turning on that on that Dahlia and just popping popping two headshots and a body shot to finish her off, and still able with only a few seconds left on the bomb to get that that, that, that pick. That was an incredible play there. Incredible accuracy and a really big misplay, honestly, by the Dahlia to lose that. Um, they're now just sort of talking about that but mistake where Elvin died. That was a very good clutch round from Crixium on the Scorch there. Um, but obviously they don't want to bring it down to such a close fight like that. So they're just talking about how they can prove it. And they're just saying El needs to come off the site if they get smoked out. And they'll give the call for it so he knows. Which is, a, again, that's good adaptation. Um, but what I was saying is the defending side here just need to play their lives. And this is where the trench is actually valuable is because he just plays his life instead of allowing them to like you let them push onto site like that's fine and if you play your life you can play the retake like they did and that's better that's kind of what 
the other defending team needed to do when they were on defense as well. Unfortunately, they were getting picks, but that's the whole strategy, right? Attackers are looking for picks, defenders are looking to pay their life and play for retake, and that's all they got to do. So now he's come off so that he doesn't get flooded from sight. He's still got someone there to watch his short now. If he gets smoked off, they're going to pull back. So really good strategy. They're playing slow. He sees the tear gas, or here's the tear gas, so no Vi is there because she's the only one. The bomb is down, they've planted onto the B site, which is fine. Again, they want to play for they want to play for the take. He's going to get a grenade in, probably a little bit high, hits him for 49. Quicks him, rushes into sight, and does get beamed on the way. Smoke coming down. Grenade comes down, a great pick onto Geo there. Knew that he'd be near the smoke, trying to look through. Vi poison coming down, they just need to take the inside of this site now. And that is what they're trying to do here. All team shooting. Because it's difficult for more than one person to peek short here. You know, it's more... And now they, and if they do, they've got three people aiming at them. They're going for the defuse. Gringo holding them off really well. Elvin holding long. Two come down long. Gets one pick. Gets two picks. And the bomb is defused in that. Doesn't matter. Getting the revives off. A really, really good play by them there. Because, also, again, that's all they got to do. Have one person... What if, if it's three before, have one person defusing the bomb. One person watching short. One person watching along, and you're fine because you can play the third person peek and probably 1v2 it. Whereas when you're the attacker side here, and as I was saying, you can't have two people playing the short angle looking onto site because you can't both really peek out at the same time. And you're going to have four people rushing you down, team shooting you. So if one person peeks, they're just going to get team shot and bursted them so quickly at this level. So, you know, it's why it's so difficult to play for plant here. And that's what. Elvin and his team adapted to really early on is they stop playing for the plant and start playing for the pick first. Okay. They see more long. But now oh, Gio's team is not able to adapt me. to that as I'm much. He's got EMP. He played his life there. Really good play again. This is just a rinse and repeat of what they've done the past few rounds to win. Bomb goes down and they're at the same disadvantage. That they're just waiting for everybody. They're just waiting for everybody to come through. They're careful of the flank because they haven't seen all members, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. He's going to play for more grenade picks. That would have been really good with those grenades. Is linked to the trench, so he does have two of them. And already, the defenders have the sight with absolutely no contestion there. Now they just split maybe three short, one long, two short, two long, whatever sort of situation they want to go as. They're, they're cautious for the flank. They see the fix. Oh, he needs to get out of this smoke. Just hold sight here. There you go. They all rush around. And they just get melted because th they have they have two people on the short, two people on the long. They have to flood them through the funnels and the defenders are going to win that because they have only two angles to watch and two people stacked at both angles. Gets the stalker, has the lifeline, has the tenacity, has everything he needs to be a good Dahlia here. And they're absolutely melting. Great play by Crixium as well. Big shout out to him for, for the, the ace that he got in the other round. Absolute a beamer there on that Scorch. But they're just playing and they're adapting to what this map needs and what the meta of this map is a lot better than the enemy team here. Okay. I imagine it's going to be another rinse and repeat. Uh, Geo's team might go for B, uh, which is a much better play for them, by the way. They can basically do the same thing, but actually have the sight. Because other than the fact that they keep stacking 3B. Uh, and that's actually really good by Elvin's team to know this, to stack 3B, to play for that, to play for that information. And, you know, they're not going to expect three people to be stacked there. So I think it's a good a good play. They're going for the plant. They see the smoke. Gas grenades come down. Fixer coming there. Is getting beamed there with 45 HP left now. Is getting smoked out. Is getting revealed. And does go down due to the track around seeing him and through that smoke. Unfortunate, but it's still a 3v4. And this is still very winnable for the defending side. As long as they keep playing the way they have. Randomly, Crump is sitting there on site at tree. That was a big mistake here. It was an easy trade there for, for Elvin's team. Gas grenade coming out, just literally just trying to like throw as much as they can down, getting the grenades. Oh, Crixium does go down then. Gringo isn't able to trade it. Poison going down, still has an incense. Incense going down to damage whoever's on site. That is another pick as a 2 for 2 now. Oh, really good C4 coming out. He's going to try and get this revive. I wonder if they'll let him get it. I'd be surprised, but the barbed wire is slowing them down. Incense coming down, stopping them. They need to just pick one. They've got one on each side. Geo half health. They just need to push together here. And now they've got sight control. Gringo melting the scorch and then moving on to the fixer. Winning that. Winning this round. Winning the game. And eventually what is was able to allow them to continue on through these brackets and take the finals and win the finals of this qualifier. Um, going up against Era Eternity then in the first round of the official 
CMG $8,000 tournament, uh, which will be a very interesting match. Era, uh, a team I'm casting throughout the event uh, on my Twitch channel, and obviously my good friends here, Elvin and Gringo, against them will be a very interesting match, to say the least. Okay then, guys, it's going to take us to the end of the video, and if you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also come follow me on twitch.tv slash raddargaming to live gameplay commentaries, guides, Q&As, and playing with viewers. All the links you need are down in the description below, but for now, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. And remember, be loyal, be brave, be relentless, and I'll catch you in the next video.